Today, we deep dive into the Z-Power accuracy of the Le Mans Revolution Trainer. This is a follow-up to the Le Mans hack tip video I've done, but we deeper dive further into the power and just see how responsive Z-Power is with this unit. Okay, background on the Le Mans Revolution. I love this train. It was one of the first direct drive trainers to come out. It has no smarts whatsoever, but it's buttery smooth, it gives good road feel, but it is as loud as a jet engine. Since the unit has a really nice predictable speed power curve, Le Mans did come out with a unit called the Watt Box which converted speed of the flywheel into a power number. It was pretty accurate. This can be done in software too, so Zwift, Trainer Road, etc. can use the same mathematics to give you a power number. Let's have a look at the data from a session I did the other day. This was on my time trial bike. I've got a Quark power meter on here, and I use Z-Power, so I had two power recordings. Let's see how closely they match. Here's my hour-long session here with the Quark versus Z-Power. The Quark being purple, Z-Power being blue. Right, so I had, it was pretty much a 4x5 session on the TT bike with a few little jumps here. I had quite a few things going on in the environment here, so I'm going to ignore the dropouts, but let's deeper dive into the actual tracking of the two power numbers. And what we've got here is the blue line, which is Z power on the Le Mans Revolution. It's the ultimate smoothing engine. You can see it's a little bit delayed in the uptake here compared to the Quark. The Quark snaps up straight away, as you'd expect with strain gauges then continues to track pretty closely all the way. Again, we'll ignore the drop. And even a little kick towards the end there, that tracks super, super nice. Um, okay, we'll skip over to the third one. Again, it misses the acceleration at the start. But tracks pretty evenly here. Another bit of a jam in the middle here. Kind of missed that, but comes up a few seconds later. Bit of a drop and the drop off. As to be expected, the quark drops off straight away. The strain gauges drop off pressure straight away. And because it's based on flywheel speed, it takes a while to drop down. So the short, sharp accelerations, let's have a look at those with Z power versus the quark. Now this is what I expected. The quark itself jumps up straight away, strain gauges, there's pressure on the pedals, and it knows how much you're putting down straight away. When the power is estimated on the flywheel speed, and you've got to spin the flywheel up, and you've got to wait for it to come up to speed, there's a lag there, and it's also not getting the spikes. As to be expected, that flywheel does not respond that fast. So for sprint power and things like responding to attacks in races on Zwift, mm, probably not the best way to go. But steady state efforts, absolutely brilliant. So here's something that impressed me, the overall stats of an hour long workout. What we can see here is 185 reported from Z power versus 184 from the Quark. The normalized power, 249 from Z power, 252 from the Quark. And as to be expected, the one second power was really, really low compared to the Quark. So overall from the entire workout, that is super, super close. I'm pretty impressed with the steady state efforts of the Z power versus the Quark power meter, but the sprints lags behind. That's what we expect. Strain gauge versus power estimation on flywheel, it's not too bad. We're talking a $50 speed sensor versus a $1,000 power meter. So the compromise there isn't too bad. Even though the Revolution is a direct drive unit, which removes a lot of variables that we have in regards to power accuracy that we see on tire on trainers, there are a few things that can get in the way of Z power accuracy. Now I'm no meteorologist, but I do know altitude does affect the speed curve on this. And there'll also be things like temperature, humidity, air density, etc. So do watch for that. We're pretty much at about 40 meters above sea level here, and those tests were performed at about 19 degrees. I'm not sure about the humidity. That's a wrap for today on the Le Mans Revolution Z-Power data analysis. Again, steady state, brilliant. Overall, magnificently close. The sprints, no, nah, just not there. I'm guessing there may be some smarts that could be built in. If you look at the acceleration time frame between every second, and if you're accelerating very, very quick, you could sort of overestimate the power, but I'm not sure how much time and resources are being put into a trainer that I don't think is even being manufactured anymore. If only the Mon bought out a smart trainer, I think they'd nail it. Okay, thanks for watching.